Amsam was building a sandcastle by the beach when a wave rushed in and washed it away. He jumped back as another wave came rolling toward him. The sea seemed alive, moving endlessly. Curious, he wondered, why do waves form in the ocean? Determined to find out, Amsam set off into the water. He swam past the shore and into the open sea. Beneath him, the water looked calm. But on the surface, it was rising and falling like a giant heartbeat. As Amsam floated, a strong breeze blew across the surface. Tiny ripples appeared, growing larger and faster. He soon realized that the wind was the key. The moving air brushed against the top of the water. Each gust gave more energy to the surface, creating ripples that joined together and formed waves. But when the waves moved toward the shore, everything changed. Huh? The ocean floor became shallower, and the waves began to slow down. Their bottoms dragged against the seabed while their tops kept moving faster. The uneven speed caused the waves to rise higher and curl forward, and finally crash down as surf. Smiling proudly, Aum Sum now understood the mystery. <laughs> Aum Sum was out for a walk on a cold winter morning. As the chilly wind brushed past his huh? face, he felt his body tremble. His teeth chattered and tiny shivers ran down his arms. Surprised, he wondered, why do we shiver? Determined to find out, Aum Sum shrank and entered his own body. Aum Sum landed near the muscles. They looked restless, twitching in short bursts. The brain had sensed the huh? drop in body temperature and commanded the muscles to contract quickly and repeatedly. Aum Sum held on tightly as the muscles began to shake all around him. The rapid contractions made the whole body vibrate. With every tremble, Aum Sum could feel warmth spreading through the tissues. The shaking wasn't random, it was the body's way of generating heat. He followed the nerve signals back to the brain and saw what was happening there. The hypothalamus, the part of the brain that controlled body temperature, was sending signals to the body to start shivering. The quick muscle movements used energy, and that energy turned into heat, helping the body warm itself. Om Sum looked around in wonder. The more the muscles shivered, the more warmth filled the air. Slowly, the temperature began to rise again. Leaping back outside, Aum Sum smiled proudly. <laughs> Aum Sum was helping in the kitchen by chopping onions for lunch. But before he could finish, his eyes started to sting and tears rolled down his cheeks. He blinked rapidly, trying to stop them. But they kept coming. Confused, he wondered, why do onions make us cry? Determined to find out, Aum Sum shrank and entered his own body. He landed near the eyes where tear glands sat like tiny water balloons. They were releasing enough moisture to keep the eyes clean and fresh. But outside, the sharp smell from the onions was spreading. As Aum Sum looked closer, he saw invisible onion vapors carrying a special chemical called synpropanethyl S oxide. It touched the thin surface of the eyes, known as the cornea. The nerves there sent urgent messages to the brain. The brain recognized the irritant and quickly commanded the tear glands to protect the eyes. In an instant, the tear glands began pumping out streams of liquid. Tears rushed across the surface of the eyes. Amsum saw how the tears weren't just water. They contained special enzymes that neutralized harmful chemicals and kept the eyes safe from infection. The blinking reflex kicked in too, helping spread the tears evenly and push the irritant outward. Smiling proudly, Amsum now understood the mystery. Amsum was watching his favorite movie when he felt the urge to pee. 
but he didn't want to miss the exciting part, so he decided to hold it in. As the pressure grew, he began to wonder, is it bad to hold our urine? His curiosity sparked, and with a blink, Omsum shrank down and entered his own body. He landed inside a balloon-like organ called the bladder. Around him was golden liquid, slowly filling the space. Huh? At first, the bladder walls stretched easily, making room without any trouble. As more urine flowed in from the kidneys, Amsum noticed the bladder walls stretching thinner and wider. The stretch sent tiny signals racing upward toward the brain. Huh? The brain responded by sending messages back to the bladder, warning that it was time to release the waste. Still, Amsum saw that valves called sphincters near the bottom stayed tightly closed. But soon, the bladder stretched too much. The stretching sent stronger and stronger signals to the brain. Amsum noticed something else. In the stored urine, bacteria had begun to appear. If the liquid stayed trapped for too long, the bacteria could multiply, causing painful infections. The body was clearly not meant to keep waste locked away for hours and hours. Slipping out of his body, Amsum smiled as he now knew the answer. <laughs>